God bless you. Um, in town, the young saints will come and do us all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that he would have cared for me. He paid a debt that, that, that he didn't owe. And I owed a debt that I couldn't pay. Thank you, Jesus. We come into your presence to sing a song to you, a song of praise and honor for all the things you've helped us through. You gave a life worth living, yeah. a life in love with you, and now I just love giving all my praises back to you. You're the Father of creation.
uh, Sam to come into a tank that we're not even in. How many love you? Yeah. How many appreciate you? Yeah. See, you're all in all. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy the service this morning. Yeah. 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 One, two, three, one. Here. Here. Yeah. To me. To God be the glory. All the faith. Time. We only want to ask the Lord what we have you to give for this service today. Come on, shake some of my hand. Come on, glad to see you. Praise our God. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
If, if possible, I'd like to get acquainted with those in my day on this side. Yes, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. So we, we had a wonderful time there and heard some real good good preaching. And, uh, yeah, Lord, some really amen. nice fellowship. And, yes, and I'm just thrilled that our precious brother, uh, um, Jewel Corny, told us that he, he's arranged to that we can come down and be with you. And yeah, yeah. He just thinks so much of you. He says, Brother Baker, you're in for a treat. He says, yeah. This is a real, they really love God. Yes. They're not ashamed of their religion. Amen. You know, Lord. It's not a religion, it's a, it's a relationship. Amen. Yeah. So, so I just feel right at home. Hallelujah. You know, like, a, you know, it, isn't it strange? You're, 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 you get around people in the world and, and you know, you, you may never get to know them. That's or true, You might work with somebody for 15 years and still not know them. That's right. You know, you might spend more time with them than you do with your family. But when it comes to the family of God, I you get together, you just meet one another. Oh. And you don't have to use a lot of words. That's right. Because there's, there's, so there's so much that you have in common. Right. Amen? Because you have the same Father. Right. And you have the same yeah. Spirit. Hallelujah. So we're just we're just we're just thrilled to be here. You know, uh, I have to be careful what I say. Uh, maybe the young people are to plug their ears. Uh, my my grandson, he's he's five years old, and, and after service on Sundays, uh, uh, he gets to ride home with Grandpa. And he gets in the back of the car, and we had a visiting minister one time, and uh, uh, I'd forgotten him. it was. The visiting minister and myself, and you know, we're kind of discussing some things that we wouldn't just tell anybody, and you know, we're just two ministers talking. And my grandson's in the back back seat, and, uh, and I kind of forgotten that he was back there. And I, I was telling the brother how um, you know, growing up, and then I'm not throwing off on, on you know, I'm glad for the religious, I'm glad for the uh, the Bible teaching that I had growing up, but, but I had a form and, and no life, yeah. and I wanted to know the God of, of the Bible. And if there's no life, it's it's hard to sit through a church service. Amen. Amen. You know, it's um, uh, it's kind of like going to work or something, you know. And, and when you're younger, it's especially hard, you know. And, but when you can't relate to what's being said, and so I was telling the, the brother, I said, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I actually hated going to church. You know, we went to we went twice on Sunday, and once on Wednesday, and my dad was a deacon, and my mom and dad taught Sunday school, and you know, I didn't, you know. I didn't understand what the guy was saying, and you know, uh, I, I just wasn't getting much out of it. You know? yeah. But I forgot my grandson was in the back seat, and I hear, "Me too, Grandpa." <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> no, I, love I love going to church. You know, people people ask you, what do you do for a good time? I say, why don't you come find out? Amen. That's right. Yes, what do you do for exercise? Why don't you come find out? I love to, I love to be around God's people. Florida. And I, I just I, I can't wait for the doors to open. I love to I love to worship. Hallelujah. I love to hear the word, don't you? Amen. We are a privileged people. That's right. We need to remind ourselves of that sometimes. That's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Now we are in a feast in this hour. We know that we're going to the wedding supper, so we're not, we're not doing away with that. But we are having a seven-course meal now. Yeah, right. And it is delicious. Amen! Yeah. But... But in order to keep this feast, we can't bring our own ideas, yes, right. our old thoughts, our old traditions, amen, and try to mix it in. Amen? Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Then we go to chapter 15, verse 20. Hallelujah. So I've got a a brother that ministers for us, a younger brother that ministers for us, and he came with us on the trip, and so he's up at Brother, Brother Hume's uh, church this evening, and uh, uh, pray that they'll have this a, a real nice time. Amen. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, 
by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. You know, the scripture says he's the firstborn among many brethren. Right? Now, firstborn only makes sense if there's a secondborn and a thirdborn and a fourthborn. Amen? He's the first of the God race. Amen? Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. That's right. That's what's taking place in this house. Amen. Lord. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death is being brought underneath his feet. And he's got two feet on the earth right now. All right. Amen. He's Amen. got he's got a bright body Lord. on the earth. Amen, which the head is uniting with. Lord. One foot on the land, one foot on the sea, one foot on Romanism, one foot on Babylonianism. Amen. Amen. The powers of Satan are being brought under the feet of the body of Christ. Lord. Lord. How many believe that? Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6. Praise this wonderful name. Hebrews 2, 6. I understand we have a baptism, so I'm going to try really hard to not to keep you too long here tonight. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him, so he's conquered all things. But now we see not yet all things put under him. So there's a difference between ownership and possession, right? God gave Abraham the land, and yet he possessed none of it. Amen? But over time, his offspring came in and possessed what, already, what Abraham already owned. Amen? The body of Christ is now taking full possession of, of what he purchased, what he bought for. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we're just so grateful, thankful, Lord. I thank you for this group of believing, the real, true, genuine. We don't call ourselves anything but Christians, Lord. That's that's good enough for us. We we want your name, Lord. We want to be like you. We want your nature. We want your mind, and your thoughts. And what a what a nice uh, a place that you provided here, Lord. And a wonderful pastor and a wonderful group of people that just want to believe your word. And, want to take you at your word and they want to see a living God in their midst. They want to surrender and, and see you manifest yourself and live out your word, which is that is the interpretation of it when you make it real and you make it live and you make them say this is that. Father, I pray that your blessings would be upon each and every one here tonight. I pray that something would be said that would be encouraging, Lord, that we could just put our shoulder behind what's already been done here. This is your work, Lord, and we just we could just play a little part here tonight, Lord, if we could get out of the way and allow you to take control, Lord, to just impart something, leave something here, Lord, in, in, uh, in Marion, South Carolina. And it would be an encouragement, be a help to your people, Lord. It, it would just, uh, uh, we, would, we would consider it a grand privilege. And so, Lord, we just pray that you take the, take the word as it goes forth and may it find its resting place, Lord. And, Father, just uh, uh, open our mouth where you would have us speak and close it where you'd have us uh, close it. But then, Lord, we ask that you be on the listening end here tonight, too. For we believe that by the Spirit that's, that's in the hearts of the believers, that you will teach us whatsoever things we have heard. And, Lord, it's you that's, that's doing the listening, and you'll teach us that internal guide and tutor. So, Lord, we ask that you speak to each and every heart here according to our need, Lord. And we surely give you the praise and honor and glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. So this morning we we, uh, we talked about the vision that Brother Branham had. It was in two parts. And the first part had to do with him heading over towards the River Jordan. He was two-thirds of the way uh, 
uh, uh, he looked back and saw that he was two-thirds of the way over, and he said, uh, praise God, over there in uh, uh, Palestine, across the Jordan River, that's where all the promises lay. And of course, we know that's speaking of the natural land that was promised to the children of Israel, but we've been promised the land too. But our land is a spiritual land, and our land is, is the land of every promise that's in this book. Our, our land is the fullness of this word. Everything that's in here that belongs to us this is our possession. Amen? Amen. And we, we, uh, we also pointed out how uh, there was a, a black mama snake, or a mama snake rather, that uh, uh, wanted to strike at Brother Branham and then wanted to strike at uh, uh, another fellow that was with him. And he was noticing that everybody was fearful and he was wondering why is everybody afraid. And of course we find out that that snake represents death. And who, you know, death is our, our final end. All right. And, and it, when it strikes at you, there's, you know, you're, when, when it comes, you're going. All right. And and yet, Brother Brown was asked, how would you like to bind this? Yes. And he said, oh, would I? Have I, I, I wanted that, I've wondered about that my whole life. I want to bind that. And he said, you bind this, everything under it is now. Glory. You loose it, and, and it's loose. And so, uh, uh, he says, well, what do I got to do? And he says, uh, uh, the Lord tells him, uh, uh, you must be more sincere. That's right, brother. And he, and he says, well, God, uh, how do I do that? Uh, and uh, so he says, God, this, these are his words, God, please forgive me for my insincerity and let me have sincerity. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, here's a man that's dedicated his whole life. He's, he's lost his, he's paid a price, lost his first wife and his, his uh, one of his daughters. And, uh, you know, he, he's, I mean, he's put everything he, he has, he's sold out, he's, he's, he's paid a price, and, and yet he's saying, God, help me to be more sincere. And I, 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 to me, friends, that just, uh, that humility is what spoke to me. You know, the, the very first tape that I listened to, my life was changed. You know, I've read some books and, and nothing wrong with that, but if you don't know what spirit is anointing that, that book, you're going to put a spirit to it, and it might you might put a hard spirit to it. You might think, man, this guy's rough, and he's just taking people's eyes off. But if you listen to how it's delivered, you know, for instance, I could write in a book, uh, uh, your, your son is going across the street, and you don't want him to go across the street, so you yell at him. No, actually, I don't tell you that you yell at him. I just say, you, you speak out, Johnny, get off the road, right? Now, you don't know how to take that. You read that, you might read it, Johnny, get off the road! Yeah. Or it might be, Johnny, get off the road. Yeah. You don't know how to take it. So in your mind, you might put a spirit to it, right? But when you hear that voice, and you hear, hear the way that, that it came across, you see, no, no, no. He wasn't trying to take our hide off. He wasn't trying to hurt anybody. He just wanted to tell us the truth. He's trying to help us. He wasn't trying to build a kingdom for himself. He wasn't trying to, you know, he could have been a very wealthy man. He had the greatest gift that's struck the earth in the last 2,000 years. He could have built an empire. He could have been very wealthy. And all those that were riding on his coattails that had lesser gifts, they did get rich. You know, you have Oral Roberts University with a hundred foot tall Jesus and you know, A.A. Uh, a. Allen with the biggest tents and all these different things, right? But but he stayed true to that word. So so the very first time that I heard him speak, I, I realized, you know, that I'm hearing something different. I, there's a humility that's coming through. And, and it, it caught my attention. He says, God, what must I do? Please forgive me for my insincerity. Let me have sincerity. And, he, and just then, he's, he's lifted up in his whole body, he says, feels like it's being charged with something. All right. And the snake then comes towards him, and he says, Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind you. Lord. And the snake curls up, and it curls up into a, a backwards hand sign, and blue smoke comes off of it, and it chokes itself with its own tail wrapped around its head. Right. And he says, the brother then was set free, this one that was afraid. And then he said he went over and using his words, he went over and mashed on it. And then he, he noticed that it turned to, to like glass. And then a voice speaks to him again and says to him, you can unbind him also. Yes. So he speaks to it, he unbinds it, and then he binds it back again. 
And a voice speaks and says, you must be more sincere. And then he finds himself standing in the room, and then he hears the alarm clock going off, and now it's time for the, the kids to go to school and all these different activities, you know how it is in the morning and things get busy and you, you got a family and people are gonna go different directions. And, and, and he realizes, I don't have much time, but the Lord just spoke to me, but I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this. All right. So he goes into his den, he gets down on his knees, and he asks the Lord, Lord, what must I do? He needs an answer, and he doesn't have much time before he has to take the kids to school. And he's not saying, well, you know, we'll just worry about that some other time. I like that approach. Yes. He said, right now, I want to know. Right now. And I believe, Lord, you can tell me. Yes. So he, 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 he says, you know, he's not trying to promote this type of an approach, but he doesn't have much time. So he just takes his Bible and opens it up. And he opens it to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, which we read here tonight. And the, and the Lord is speaking to him, telling him, you must be more sincere. And then we know that the seals come off the book a little over a year later. So the Lord was preparing him for this work that was going to come. This further unfolded, this junction in time. So in this vision, he had seen the promised land, and he said, bless God, in the promised land is where all the blessings lay. Yes. So all the blessings lay in a very particular place. It's not just anywhere. Lord. You know, as a modern political correctness would, would have us believe that, you know, there's lots of doors that lead to heaven. No, there isn't. Amen. There's one door. Right. And Christ is that door. Right. You say, well, that sounds mean-spirited. I don't care how it sounds. Right. It's the truth. Right. If you come, you're only going to come through that door. And if you try to come in through a window or some other way, you're going to be embarrassed because you're not going to have a landing on it. And he might even call your friend. But he's going to say, how'd you get in here? You didn't come by me. So in that vision, he told this is where the promise, all the promises lay. Now, we know that the tribe of Reuben and half of the tribe of Manasseh they actually chose to take their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan River, outside of the Promised Land. And there were blessings there for them. Isn't it? That, uh, 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 just as there were blessings in the wilderness. Just as there are, there are still some blessings in the organized ranks of religion. But that was not their promised inheritance. That's not their portion. That's not what God had promised them. So amazingly, to my thinking anyway, some chose to settle for that. And they did not cross over the River Jordan into the land along with the rest of the believers. Now God permitted it, but Brother Branham was shown in a vision that it was across the Jordan River where all the full inheritance yes. lay. I'm just laying a foundation here for where we're going to go in a few moments. So friends, I'm not here for partial redemption. Here, all right, all right. I'm not here to just have a nice church and a nice family and a nice car and a nice this and a nice that. Those things come with being a Christian. And if those are not my goals, that's not what I'm seeking after. That just comes along with serving God. But I want full inheritance. Now please, I, 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 I may have to spend a few moments because I, I sure don't want to confuse anybody or go a different direction. Go ahead, bro. But 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 uh, you know, some there are people in our that have formed, there are groups that have formed in our ranks, and I'm not speaking about people, I'm talking about an attitude and an approach go ahead, bro. that isn't correct. Yes. And their testimony is, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Alright. Well friends, that's what I said as a Baptist. Alright now. And what they're right. really saying is I'm not going Well, we'll get to that here in a little bit. We'll, 
We'll just touch on that a little bit because we're, you will never, we're not talking about perfect in your flesh. That will never happen. If, if that would happen, why do you need a body change? All right. All right. All right. So we're talking about maturity. We're talking about fullness. We're talking about you coming to your place. Be complete. Be full. Be everything that God wants you to be. I believe he saw in a vision what took place in the garden. I believe that he saw these different events. He saw the key that's up there in the tree. You know, he saw a blind bar miss. Showed me this quote from 1955 in Phoenix. Brother Branham had, uh, had preached a service and then a vision started breaking. And he said, Something happened here last night. He says, he says, I didn't come to myself till about two o'clock in the morning. My. He said, normally, you know, I start having visions and it's this person out here and that person. <laughs> he said, the vision started coming. He said, I saw Adam I and Eve in the garden. I don't know. <laughs> And he said, I saw them. Adam put his arm around his wife. Yeah. And he chose to walk out of the garden yeah. knowing that there wasn't another rib in there. There wasn't another Eve. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than live without the, the rest of himself throughout eternity, he chose to walk out with her. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the Father of God said, God looked on that and God was moved. Yeah. You know, friends, we got, we got this great that's been presented to us by so many, you know, a, a stoic God that has no feeling. That's right. God has feelings. Brother Daniel put it this way. So God had thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. If all he was interested in is, was his thoughts, none of this is necessary. All right, all right. Go ahead, brother. We are living out Amen. his thoughts. his own thought right here. We used to think that God wanted to have a family. That was a nice picture, you know, a uh, God that he's a little closer and he wanted to have a family. You know, somehow there's a connection there. Yes. Then we found out, no, he didn't want to have a family. He wanted to be a family. He wanted to play out the bride. He wanted to play out the bride and groom. He wants to play out a, 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 a loyal son or daughter of God, a teenager. Uh, a, a, a godly housewife. He wants to play a role. Yes. 
part. Those attributes were in him, waiting to be expressed. So Brother Adam said that, that, that uh, God was watching and he was moved at what he saw. Right? He said he, he dramatized it for us, but he's seeing it. He said, I saw this in a vision. He said, I saw God take these bloody skins. God slayed a lamb. Yeah. Right. right? So the, the tree huggers that are against killing animals, God did it first. All right. Amen. And he slayed a lamb. He shed the first blood. Right? And he took those bloody skins and he threw them in the bushes. And he said, he, uh, uh, Adam wrapped himself in it. He wrapped, wrapped herself in it. He said, I saw Adam walking out of the garden. And he said, as he's walking, that bloody skin is hitting him on the leg. And that blood state is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he said, he said, God looked upon it. Now he thought about it, friends. This wasn't a new thought. He'd seen this. He knew what was going to be played out. But God has moved because it's now being lived out. He says in another place, he's talking about the beginning of the creation of God, where God's creating himself into his own creation. As God is condescending, he creates a body for himself. He says, I see a, I see a little light appear. Right? And he says, all that God was, he poured into that, and he's creating the, the Logos, right. a spirit body for himself, yes. the pillar of fire. Right. And he's pouring somehow all of his thoughts, his attributes, into that. Right. He's condescending. Yes, and it's in that form that he speaks. Right. He's becoming the Son of God. Right. It's the same God. Right. But now he's, he's, right. he's, now he's bringing himself into a, 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 a means or a manner so that he can speak and, and, and begin to manifest his thoughts, bring things into being. Glory. Amen? Amen. And Brother Brown said, I see him uh, like a child playing before his father's step. Uh, right. Right. God got happy. Yes. He pours himself into the Logos and now he's experiencing his own thoughts for the first time. And he got happy. Said like a child playing before his father's step. Right? So here we are in the garden, and he sees Adam walking out, and he sees that the the, the bloody lambskin slapping him on the leg, and God, brother God said, God was moved, and God said, I'm going to do this very same thing in four thousand years. This is God's thought. This is his expression. He's, he's seeing it typed out in, his, in the first couple. And then he says, I see the scene change. Now remember, he's having this vision. He just prays. And now he's having this vision. And he says, now I see. I see the Lord Jesus. He says, the scene changes. And 4,000 years later, and I see this stupid shouldered man with a cross on his shoulder. And he said, he's got a one-piece robe on and he says, I see that robe slapping him on the leg. Oh my. Oh my. I see that blood stain getting bigger and bigger. It's what took place in the garden yeah. happening again. Yeah. Because the bridegroom had chosen to walk out and die for his bride. To pay the price for her. Oh, These aren't just stories. You know, Moses told us God did this and God did that. It, he's he's kind of, you know, kind of giving us an editorial. He's kind of giving us a, this happened and that happened. So Moses told us from the beginning, on up, this is what happened. God sent a prophet in this hour, and he says, I want you to know how God felt about it. Amen. The very heart of God was expressed to us. What was in his heart is being expressed. Oh, hallelujah. What was in his heart and who was in his heart? express your heart too, oh brothers. Oh even, even to the point, you know, the very place that our, that our prophet was brought out of where he was raised in Indiana, you know what they call that? They call it the heartland. Oh that's where my, my parents are from, just coincidentally, but that's where they were born and raised on, the, on a farm and uh, 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 lived very poorly, but they lived off the land lived, uh, uh, and, you know, they had enough to eat, but uh, my dad tells me that there are four variety of plants and different species that grow there in that part of the country than any other place in the heartland. So in the heartland, God brought out his prophet to express the very heart of God.
Not only what he did, but how he felt about it. Amen. And how he feels about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh my. God is so good. Yes, I never got to my point, did I? Bless it, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless it, Lord. All right. So let's let's go. Let's let's fast forward. So when God created that the logos, then He poured Himself all that He was into that logos. Right. Where were you? Oh my, Lord. Lord. You were in Him. Right. Now, when he came down and he became flesh 2,000 years ago, huh? where were you? Lord! Oh, my. You were in him. Is that right? Now, he went before Pilate. He went before the governor. I was there. And, and, and he was told, I find no fault in you. Oh. So let me ask you this, sinner. All right. sacrifice and you were in him. Now if you're a sinner, you just messed up the whole picture. So the real you is not a sinner. If you can find it in questions and answers. Brother Brown is asked point blank, are Christian sinners? He says no. And then he says, I felt that. I felt that, you know, there was resistance to that that went through the I felt that. And I feel it sometimes too. Sometimes it's maybe we just had, you know, it's, it's we're being purged of our our old thinking. All right. And actually, we might think that we're we're being holy by making that statement that we're or, or that we're being humble. Oh no, I'm not me. I'm just a sinner. You're not. Amen. Right. <laughs> you know, the the scripture in First John says that he who says he's without sin, he's a liar. All right. Okay, that's before your birth. All right. All right. We all have to realize. I was a sinner. Yes. I need salvation. Yes. I need grace. Oh, I need mercy. Yes. I need him to reach down his hand. Yes. I need him to do the impossible. Yes. I need him to do something supernatural yes. in my life. Oh, all right. yeah. But then he says in 1 John chapter 3, those that are born of God do not commit yes. sin. It's got to get to the place where you realize at, at one time, brother, at one time, I was hidden in him. All right. Oh, we're going another direction. All right. That's all right. Let's go back to the garden here for a moment, okay? Where was Eve? God created man and called their name Adam. So where was Eve? She was the mystery of Adam. Oh, right. in Adam. Yeah. Adam couldn't fellowship with her. Didn't know anything about her, but she was in him. She was flesh with flesh, bone with his bone. Is that right? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, you know, we know Adam named everything, and, and we know that, that, uh, that a day came where, where uh, Adam looked around, and for the very first time, God said, It is not good. Lord. He said it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good. But there came a time for the very first time he said it's not good for man to dwell alone. All right now. Now what he was telling you was it's not good for God to dwell alone. Yes, that's right. Because at one time he was all alone. So when you get alone and you feel like that you're all alone and the devil's trying to just really tell you that you're just abandoned. Oh. Friends, 2,000 years ago he was forsaken. Uh-huh. The spirit left him. The stars turned their back. The earth turned his back. The, the disciples left. He was completely forsaken. Amen? And he, he was completely forsaken so that you wouldn't have to be. And then he came along and said, I will never forsake you. You will never, ever have to go through what I'm doing. I took that on myself. You're never going to have to experience it. Yeah. I'll be with you. Yeah. Oh, 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 so in your trial, when you can find 
don't you live for God? Amen. Because if the devil's there, God's there too. Yeah. Is that way or not the devil's there? God's there. He said, I won't forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so Adam looks around and he sees that God is, had made two of everything. There was a counterpart to every part. Until it came to man. Yes, sir. Now, brothers, I'm pretty sure that he looked at Mrs. Serpent. All right. And thought, you know, yeah, we can speak the same lingo, but we ain't the same. All right. Right? Yeah, amen. Right? You're not my mate. All right. Amen. Right? Yeah, you're not the part of me that's missing. You might have some nice conversation, whatever, but you're not part of me. I'm not part of you. All right. We're not the same species. Amen. Where's my counterpart, God? Huh? Amen. We're, we're, I, I see everybody else's counterpart. Where's mine? Amen. Amen. So God causes a sleep to go on Adam, just as he causes a sleep to go on the second Adam, yes. or the last Adam, on the cross. All right. He causes a sleep to go on him. He reaches inside, takes out a bone from under the heart where she's at. She's, she's, she's got his heart. She's in his heart. She's the expressive part of him. She's the feeling part of him. Hallelujah. So God reaches in there, pulls out part of him, makes a body. Amen? Now she doesn't even have a name yet. Then he takes the spirit that's in her, the, the soul divides that being, puts the foolish part in her, the masculine part remains in him. Yes. Then he brings them together and he says, you two are one. Uh -huh. You know what my answer is? Duh. Whatever. They already were one. All right. We look at that and we say, oh, wasn't that supernatural? Isn't that a wonderful thing? He made these two one. They were one. All right. All right. She was what was in him revealed. Amen. She was the mystery of Adam revealed. I hope they're listening tonight. And now, uh, imagine, imagine the anticipation. You know, uh, uh, there was a time, uh, 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 you know, before uh, when I was a kid growing up, and I would just look forward to Christmas. You know, we didn't get a lot of a lot of things. You know, usually you get clothes or things like that. And I'm not, I'm not crying about that, but, but you know, you're always hoping that you get something that you know is a little above and beyond, and, right? Because you made your list, and right, you hope, oh, man, I hope one of these things makes a list. And, you know, you can't sleep the night before, and, right? And you're so, you can't wait for the morning, and you're so in anticipation and excited because you wonder, what did I get? What's my gift? Right? You're right. looking forward to it. Imagine Adam, knowing that the part of him that he's never met. Let, let's let God live this out, okay? This is his drama. Let's, let's let him unfold the drama, and let's just be part of it. Be part of the expression. Hallelujah. Because that's exactly what we are. Amen. Blessed be his wonderful. Amen. So Adam's wondering what's she gonna be like? What's she gonna look like? How is she gonna act? Is she gonna is she gonna talk nonstop like Mrs. Serpent or <laughs> all right. Is she gonna want me to rearrange the house all the time? I don't know. What's she gonna be like? So he's got in his mind certain thoughts and expectations. But when he when when he comes out of the anesthesia, when he resurrects, Hallelujah. when he comes forth, he sees her for the first time. All right. All right. Think about it. And she comes to him. Now I want you to catch this. I don't know how we got into this, but we're there. Big loud. I want you to catch this. She comes to him. She doesn't know who she is. So who tells her what her identity is? The world. Mr. Serpent, Satan, an orangutan, Doctor Doctor Doolittle. She doesn't know who she is. So she comes to the Word. She comes to her mate. She comes to her counterpart, and he says, "I want you to know who you are." Yeah. Yeah. This is where the Roman spirit came in. Oh, oh. And this is where you came out. Oh, oh. 
questions. Who am I? What's my name? He says, your name is Roman. All right, all right. You are a man with a womb. All right. Your name is Woo Man. All right. You're the part of me that was missing. You're the mystery of me revealed. You are what was in me now being expressed. All right. Now, friends, I am sure, without a shadow of a doubt, she exceeded his expectations. She was more than what he expected. He was just so enthralled, so delighted, so in love. So he had to tell her where she came from. He had to tell her, God spoke to us. But you didn't hear it because you were in me. But God spoke to us. And God told us to be fruitful. Lord, Lord, Lord. God told us to have dominion. Yeah. Yeah. What else did he say? Well, he said there's two trees here. You can partake of this one, but don't, don't, oh, thank you. But you can't partake of this other one. All right. Amen? Well, he said that. So she didn't hear it directly. Right? right. She had to hear it from her counterpart. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. Okay. If you could just, if you could just recognize that you didn't hear it directly either, Amen. That's right. your counterpart had to tell you, Amen. and that's what his word is. He had to tell you. And the only reason you didn't hear it is because you were in him. That's right. Oh yeah. All right. So she finds out what her identification is. He gives her a name. Your name is woman. She's not Eve yet. She right. didn't become the mother of all living until she became the mother of all living. Yes. Amen. She got a name change. Right. Right. She got a name change too. Hallelujah. So, 4,000 years later, inside of the bridegroom is the bride. Amen. She's flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, gene of his gene, attribute of his attribute. Is that right? She's a portion, but collectively, you know, excuse me, uh, please just bear with me. But if we're not careful, we actually, you know, we go around saying, I'm bride. All right. I'm bride. Technically, that's not correct. Go ahead, brother. Technically, you're a son or daughter of God. All right. Go ahead, brother. Are we listening? Go ahead, brother. You see, you can spank a son or daughter of God. You don't spank the bride. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Right? But you take me as a son of God, you take him as a son of God, you take her as a sister of God, and her as a sister of God, you put us together, we make up the bride. All right. Is that right? Because the bride is one, made up of many members. Hallelujah. So in him was a bride, right? That he paid for, just as Adam walked out of the garden, so did this second Adam pay the price, the last Adam paid the price, purchased her, and, on, on, and, and then she came out of his side, and on the day of Pentecost, she was born. Amen. 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 Then he sent ministers to begin to tell her who she is. Amen. But it was his voice. Amen. Tell her, this is who you are. Lord, Lord. This is where you came from. This is where you're going. This is what your name is. Yes, sir. So there was a time when I was hidden in him. Right? Amen. But now, 2,000 years later, here we are at the end time, and now he's hidden in me. Amen. He's tabernacled in me. I was in him, he's in me. That's that scripture. In that day, you'll know that I am the Father, the Father in me, I am you, and you in me. And the Father God told us, this is that day. Psalm 27, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his secret place, in his pavilion, which is, which is a tent. In his pavilion, he shall set me upon a rock. He shall put me up on a high place, lift me up above my enemies. Yes. Amen? Don't get, don't get nervous, friend. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. He'll hide me. Where am I hidden? Where am I tonight? This is not him. Amen? This is the... The uh, 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 brother Ben said this is the veil, and that's what that's what uh, uh, stumbles us. All right. We can't see beyond the veil. But my faith believes. Yeah. My faith tells me it's not hope. Yeah. It's revelation. Yeah. My faith tells me that it's a real part of me. Yes. Amen. Lord. Is that right? Amen. And that real part of me is in Him. Amen. And He just has.
happens to be in me. Because I'm his tabernacle. Right. 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 Oh, so wonderful. So beautiful. So the only way the devil can get to me tonight is for him to be born again. Right. And then he can come into the same place I'm at. But he'd be my brother then. That's right. Yeah. So he doesn't know where I'm at. Because there's hope for that. A sealed son and daughter, born again son and daughter of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Satan doesn't know what to do with you. All right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless you, be as wonderful. Amen. All right, I'm gonna throw this one. I'm gonna throw this out here. No, we're not. Back our story. I don't know what we're gonna get, but think about this. In the garden, there's an angel that was kicked out of heaven. This angel is a. Is a He's a, a mighty angel. Right. In fact, he's God's right hand man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So to speak. Right. To get to God. He's, a, he's an overshadowing cherub. Mm. He's over the ark. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. And to, to get to God, you gotta go through him. All right. Right. And he's beautiful. Right. right? And he's perfect in all his ways. Huh? Right? Yes. And he's actually a protector of the word. Lord, yes, brother. Oh, yes. And he's perfect in all his ways until, 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 until. one day, iniquity was found. Yes. Now, Amen. God didn't create iniquity, and he didn't make it. That, that was a choice. So Lucifer, Lucifer got elevated. He got out of his position. He got another thought. Amen. Amen. He said, you know, why is he, why is this, why is he getting worshipped all the time? You know? Why don't they just, you know, why don't, why don't I get that worship? Right? Yeah. And he actually deceived a third of the angels. Yes, he did. Friends, this happened in church. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The battle started in church. Yeah. And a deceiving preacher deceived a third of the angels yeah. in church. But aren't you glad there's two thirds that said, I don't believe that? Yeah. I'll stay with Michael. You guys go with Lucifer. I'll stay with Michael. I'll stay with the truth. I'll stay with the word. Hallelujah. So this angel gets the boot. He gets kicked out of heaven. Right? Then we read in is it Ezekiel where he says, uh, I will exalt myself above the most high. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. All right. Well, the stars of God and the sons of God. So, so he's kicked out of heaven. He's trying to figure out a way to get back down. In Mount Zion on the sides of the north, I will, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. He's, he's scheming. He's trying to figure out, how can I get back in? All right. You know, I don't know about you, but I always wondered about this. If Satan, I, I, now God just makes everybody a certain way. The way he made me, I'm a puzzle builder, and I stare at things. If, if I look at something that doesn't make sense, I stare at it. And I might have to stare at it for 20 years. Oh my. But one day, the Lord shows it. Right. Right? In due season, in due time. Right. Something so you don't discard it. Right. You don't understand it. You're just looking at it and you're thinking, you know, I know I'm not getting this. Amen. I know I'm missing something in this right. Right. So what I stared at, uh, uh, Brother Gibbs, for so long was if Satan got kicked out of heaven, what's he doing in heaven? Come on. Right. Oh my. Right, brother. Oh, brother. Go ahead. And then in the book of Revelations, we see him getting kicked out again. All right. Well, I thought he already was kicked out. How do you get back in? Oh, oh my. Well, it tells us right there in the, in the Old Testament how he got back in. So let me just dramatize this here for a moment. And you just forgive me if I'm taking a little too much liberty here. But, but I trust that we'll get a point across here, okay? Amen. Satan looks down. Satan knows he can't get out of the fall. Satan wants to be back in the heavenly places, which is your position. All right. All right. You, weren't, you weren't created to have preeminence physically. Yes, sir. When man fell, he didn't fall from the earth. All right, well, We're still the dominant species. That's right. Brother. He fell from heaven. Amen. He was created in the image of his God Amen. as a spiritual being, yes. and he ruled from a faith realm. All right. He ruled by faith. He didn't have to understand how things were. He just speak. Glory. Glory. Right. He didn't have. It wasn't up to him to worry about. Okay, when I say that word, what's the physics of all this? And, right. You know, what's the speed of light? And, all that other kind of nonsense, right? That, that's that's what you do when you follow it. Yes, because you're trying to understand God's laws. But in that dimension, you just speak. 
Amen. You know, when Jesus, when Jesus, when the, when the, the second Adam came to show us what the first Adam was like, the first thing he did was he said, Satan, come out. He didn't say, uh, let's see, you've got encephalogenema hymen of a Buddha, da, some big old long word. Don't you feel so much better when you get that big long word? Here's what you got. And you're going to die. You got this big long word. Right? That ain't nothing but a devil. Jesus said, to look over and you've got supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. He looked over and he said, devil, come out. What's the physics of this? Uh, C equals MC squared times in the speed of light and then the conservation of angular momentum. And, uh, friends, he didn't need to. That's what we do as reasoning individuals. We just said, come out, devil. And the devil obeyed him. Showing us, as we take our position in the kingdom, what we're going to do. Tear Satan's kingdom down. Cast down stronghold. Tear down, run down anything that comes, uh, imaginations and reasons and anything that exalts itself above the word of God. Cast it down. Because there's another kingdom that's come. And this kingdom, when, when another kingdom comes, another kingdom is being pushed out. Satan, we're tearing your kingdom down. You are a defeated enemy. You were defeated 2,000 years ago. And you're squatting on our land. And we've come to take it. Oh, we had time to go through this. I just hit a couple of high points and just trust that trust that you'll catch catch the thought of where we're trying to go here. Uh, uh, so so this mighty angel who got the boot, he, he, he comes down to earth. The scripture says he walked amongst the stones of fire. Right? He was he was in the garden of God. Right? He's one of the trees that's there. Right. right, and so he looks at he looks at the word. He looks at Adam, and he realizes, you know what? Think about this, friends. But right? is this okay? God creates Adam. He creates him in spirit being. Then God sees there's no man to till the earth, so he creates a body, right? And Brother Graham said this body was like a tree in the ground with his toes like roots going into the ground. He's standing there and he's not moving like a lot of church members. All right. Oh my. He's potentially alive, but he ain't alive. Yet. Right. Oh my. Oh, hallelujah. So he sat in there like a wooden Indian. And God breathes into him the breath of life. So here's Adam. Now watch. Here's, here's the angels. Here's Michael and Gabriel. They've seen him say, let there be. Let there be. And, and Michael says, hey, Gabe, what do you, what do you think that is? Let there be light. What do you think light is? I don't know. But well, you know, just stick around and it'll be it'll be self-evident. God said it, so it's gonna happen. Lord. And we'll know what it is when it happens. Yes. The manifestation will be the interpretation. Yes. Amen. 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 So these the, these angels are walking, watching, and God is starts to the former the lower forms of, of, of life in God's form of evolution, and he works up to the higher forms. Now don't let that stumble you. Every species was the same. Yes, right. God didn't take this species and then make another one from that. He started from scratch with every one of them. Right. But he started with the lowest forms and worked his way up to the God man. Oh. Thank you, Lord. I know that symbols people, but think about it. It's true. My daddy is an elephant. <clears throat> so what does that mean? An elephant. Brother Doug, that so even I can mention that one. That is, give me a hard one. If my daddy has a long trunk that goes like this, what am I going to have? A long trunk that goes like that. You say, well, you've got a big nose there, Brother Doug. You're kind of convincing me. <laughs> <laughs> even when I was skinny, I had a bigger nose. If my daddy had big horns coming off, tusks, what would I have? If he had a little bitty brain, what would I have? Okay, now you're convinced that I'm talking about myself, right? So if my daddy's an elephant, I'm an elephant. Right? If my daddy's a lion, what am I? If my daddy's a giraffe, what am I? 
If my daddy's a fish. Why do you Maybe I should let you say it. Woo! I'll, I'll, I'll go out here. I'll come back. Let me know how it works out. If my daddy is God. Yeah. 
he's trying to make too much. I'm just trying to get you to recognize the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Who is man? That God would be mindful of. What was man before he fell? He wasn't just the dominant physical creature. He still is the dominant physical creature. He was the spiritual king. Adam was the prince of the power of the air. Because he ruled from the heavenly dimensions. He spoke just as his daddy did. And the elements obeyed him. The second Adam came in. Amen? Yes. It wasn't a physical man, it was the God in the man. Yes. Showing us what we tell them. Showing us what we're going to be restored back to. Yes. So, okay, so, you with me so far? Amen. So Adam says, so, so Satan looks at Adam and he thinks, I want his position. Because this man's ruling from the heavenly place. All right. I got kicked out of heaven, I want back in. So he looks at Adam. He studies him for a little while. Okay, let me back up a little bit. Because he, he saw Adam being created. That's where we're at, right? God breathes into him the breath of life. Angels are watching. Their heads are bowed. They're watching. This is the highest form of God's creation. Lord. This is God creating himself. His offspring. Part of himself. God breathes into him the breath of life. Adam becomes a living soul. Michael, Gabriel, Wormwood, they're looking on. Adam's eyes come open. They make the mistake of looking him in the face. And they look at those eyes and they bow their heads. Because the, the eyes of the window saw, oh, yeah. and they looked at those eyes and they say, He's just like His daddy. Oh, yeah. That's God in the other form. That's His Son. Friends, who has more power with God? A sinner? Saved by grace. That's been, the, the shed blood is taken away, is, is washed away, he's taken away his sin. Or the mighty angel Gabriel. Right. Who has more trouble with God? Yeah. You know, God's having a conversation with Gabriel. Uh-huh. Right? Ooh. And they're, they're just talking about things, and it's important now because he's giving them orders, and this has got to take place, and I want you to go and do this, and here's the next phase, and here's my plans, and here's what you need to go do. Paul said, no, no, no. The phone rings. Oh. Amen. And, and so somebody brings a phone over to God. And God picks it up. He says, "Hello, oh, this is your son, brother Gibbs." All right. Come on. And God looks over at Gabriel. Can we finish this some other time?
Ain't been waiting for this hour, this oh, moment, this time, this season. You couldn't come any other time. It was the earth had to turn so that the evening light could come. Because you're an evening light seat. And he knew you were planted here. He knew what bed, what time, what season that you'd be planted. This is Lord. So you say amen. That you would come forth. Amen. Then he goes on a little further. He says, the message of the hour. Hallelujah. Oh, friends. Lord. Written epistles, read of all men. What does that mean? You are the word being lived out in your death. We got a man marry a man, a woman marry a woman, a woman wanted to marry a chimpanzee, whatever. And God says, hey, I got a different thought on that. Family is my idea. And I'm going to show you what I think about it. Have you considered this? Have you considered that? He's placed you here to reflect his thought of what a true family is. Now the angels can't even look at him. Just, they just, oh, it's so good. So every time I, doesn't he look like his dad? Oh, yeah, especially in the eyes. He's got his daddy's eyes. Don't we do that, sisters? Who do you think he looks like? He looks like kind of like a cross between Uncle Bill and Aunt Bethel. Or whatever. Right? That was, I, was, I was supposed to be black, but they got it kind of messed up. I'm so sorry, brother, that you turned out the wrong color. He <laughs> said, you just sit right here. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I, actually, I found out I'm a Jew. Not only am I a Jew, but I'm descended from Aaron. I've got a DNA testing. I'm actually a color. That and about five bucks will get you a cup of coffee. Well, God knows what to do. He's worked a lot, you know, your second birth. Is, you know, God knew what he was doing when he mixed you in your first birth. And, you know, my, my ancestors came over here. And, I'm sorry. I mean, 1640 came over from England. And probably they got expelled. You know, they're Jews and, and uh, came over here. And there was a, uh, some pressure put on them there. And, and uh, came over here. And, you know, maybe they changed their name or went underground or whatever. But, but I've got like five generations of Moses. I named my son Micaiah, not knowing that way back in my lineage was Micaiah. All these different things, and, and uh, <clears throat> neither here nor there, but landed here in 1640, and my ancestors were actually living in North Carolina, and I went to a battlefield here up, uh, what is it, Calpins. Yeah. Went up to the battlefield there and found where my eighth grandfather in my past was, uh, <clears throat> was in that battle, and uh, a cannonball came toward him, a three-pounder, and somehow something caused him to move in the last minute. And that cannonball went by him, and it blew up, and he lost the hearing in his ear. But you see, I was in him. <laughs> and I had to come forth. Because God, God was going to then mix... Uh, 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 Mix that blood with a Cherokee. My, my mother's grandmother is Cherokee. All right. Mix that in. Need a little dose of this. A little bit more lead. A little bit more tin. A little bit of this that because he's got to make a certain sound. Yeah. There you go. So I got to mix them up. The work that I called him to do, and I know what I'm doing. So I got to watch over that grand granddad that almost got killed in that war, and I reached over and I had an angel reach over and grab him. Because my son hasn't come forth yet. Yeah. Now you believe it however you want, but I believe God is completely in control. I believe he's watched over every detail. He ain't getting surprised about nothing. This is his story. That's what history is. It's his story. It's his story from the beginning all the way to the end. So here's this God man now walking on the earth, but he's still, he's, he's controlling things by the spoken word because that's how his daddy does it. 
Right? But he's, he's in heavenly places. And yet you see him here on the earth. But he's in heavenly. There's a part of him that's in heaven. Yes. Friends, there's a part of me right now that's in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, which is my position. And I've got news for you. It's not right here. But yet it is right here. It's in another dimension. And that other dimension is moving just a little faster than this one. One day I'm going to catch up. Or it's going to slow down. One, one day or another, the two are going to meet. When you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you heard from your theophany. He said your theophany is there to give you a charge, like a charge on the back of And you don't even know yourself. Something will strike you. You don't even know how you know. The Lord goes forth, you're like, whoa, that's the truth. And something grabs your arm and says, say amen to that. in me. Because it's not complete without me. And everybody doesn't have a theophany. If your name is on the Lamb's Book of Life, you've got a body waiting for you. We have a body terrestrial and a body celestial. That body's waiting for me. As I'm maturing so that what's in me is fit to live in that. Because it didn't have character and it's getting it. Hallelujah. Okay, I better hurry because I'm taking too much time here, but so here we are. You're, you're a wonderful group to see. Glory, brother. I'm getting something out of this. I, I, I'm almost believing it myself. Glory. You know, we believe and we believe and we believe that there's levels. Amen. Right? And as we hear things and, and it breaks, it, it takes us to another level. Yeah. Might even be the exact same words, but we get to another level. Yeah. When the bride truly recognizes who she is. First thing we heard when the seals came open is she never did it. Yes, that's right, brother. And yet, so many of us can't accept that. Oh no, I'm a sinner saved by grace. How could you be? You never did it. All right. Luther said God forgave you. That was his revelation, but it wasn't the fullness of it. Amen. It was under the thunders. Yes, sir. The rest of that mystery came forth when the seals came open. Yes. And the rest of that mystery was, no, you weren't forgiven, you never did it. That's right. What would God said if you came along and said, you know what, you were drunk the other night, but I forgive you. He says, if I didn't drink, forgive me. I didn't do it. I'm not forgiven. I didn't do it. Don't come to me with I'm forgiven. I didn't do it. The title was searched. You didn't do it in the first place. Where were you in the first place? In him. Francis, when we just read the scripture, we look at Abraham. I, I was going to get to this tonight. I'm not going to get to this. A little too late. But, but we, we look at Abraham, and it looked like he doubted. We look at what he did in the natural. Can, can I go through this real quick? I'll get back to my other story. I haven't forgotten about it, but we'll get back to it. So, so. Oh, my. Blessed be his wonderful. God comes to Abraham, and it's, a, it's at the time when Lot doesn't believe in the cloud anymore. I mean, uh, oh my. there's a separation that takes place. Lot's having a problem with the message. Lot goes back into the world. God, Lot's looking at the natural things. Abraham doesn't want him to leave, but Lot actually does him a favor. Yes. And actually, the word brings the separation. Right. Amen? And God never called Lot to begin with. Lot's name wasn't on the land of Lot. God went in and said, Abraham, come with me. Oh, uh, and leave everything behind. So Abraham says, okay, I'll take my daddy. Come on, friends. Showing the heart of a, of a believer, right? And then Lot tags along. We don't know if he said, Lot, why don't you come along? But his nephew tags along. He's probably feeling like, you know, maybe his brother died or I don't know. Maybe he's feeling responsible for Lot. Huh? So Lot just tags along. And Lot just loves to hear the stories that Abraham tells. Yes. From business. He's hunting and fishing stories. Yes. Right. But there comes a day 
where, where Lot just can't handle the message anymore. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. They're Amen. in the desert. And he's stuck. He can't handle it anymore. Amen. Right? So Lot, there's, there's, there's a problem that's between them. They separate. Somebody say praise the Lord. Are, are we okay here? Uh, I get myself into trouble? Okay. I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to finish this up. A separation takes place, which is the best thing that happened to Abraham. Yes. Because he couldn't have a one-on-one -on -one visitation from God with Lot still hanging around. Amen. Because what fellowship can light have with darkness? That's good. Believe with unbelief. So a separation takes place. And now Elohim comes down and says, look, I want to tell you who you are. I want to make a covenant with you. But before I do that, the first thing that you need to know is that I'm the strong one. Lord. I'm the mighty angel Amen. of my own covenant. Lord. I'm Almighty God. Lord. And I need you to know that. Amen. That whatever you have need of is in me. I'm, 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 I'm your everything. Amen. Amen? I want you to know that. And I want to make a covenant with you. So Abraham's listening. And God says, uh, uh, I'm going to make you, I want you to look up into the stars. There's your spiritual seed. I want you to look down to the ground. There's your natural seed. All right. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be the father of many nations. Glory. A guy that never even had a kid. Yeah. He's going to be the father of many nations. Yeah. Right? He's, he's thinking, there's a catch to this. What, what do I got to do? Right? What do I got to do? So he's listening. He's got his ear. Okay, Lord. All right. Okay. And what's my question? Oh, that's it. I know that that doesn't sit well, does it? Look, God tried the, the two part covenant and it didn't work. That's right. In the garden, God said, You do this, live, you do that, you die. Man couldn't keep his enemy. So God says, All right, I'm going to make another covenant. I'm going to do this. The only part Abraham had to play in it was, be it unto me, according to thy word. Only believe. Amen. I believe that. Lord. Amen. I accept that. Amen. I want to be part of that covenant. Lord. Right? Right. So he's listening, and then God says, oh, by the way, walk before me and be perfect. Yes. Yeah. Abraham says, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It was right within my reach. Right up there to the last moment. And then he raises the bar. I was just about to grab the bar. And now he moved the bar up. I can't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. God just raised the bar up. So God says, wait a minute, Abraham, I'm not done. I'm going to give you a name change. And I'm going to foreshadow what's going to take place a few thousand years here in the future. I'm going to take my name... J V H U. And I'm going to take a letter from the middle of my name, the H. Then I'm going to take your name and I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to take that letter from the middle of my name and stick it right in the middle of your name and close it back up. Because what I want to show you, Abraham, is that you're going to walk before me and be perfect. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that in 2,000 years. In the future, I'm going to come myself and do in you what you can't do. I'm going to give you a new spirit, a new nature. I'm going to come down. I've made a covenant with you, and I'm going to keep both ends of the covenant. Is that right? Think about it, friends. God, God uh, 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 back then they would take an animal, they rip it in half, and then uh, the two the two people that made a covenant, they walked in the midst of this animal that was ripped in half. And what they were saying was, if I don't keep my end of the bargain, let me be as this animal. That's right. Ripped in half. Right? If I break my covenant, let me be as this animal. Right? So in this case, God causes a sleep to go on Abraham. God says, Abraham, you don't have to be part of this. God takes an animal, cuts it in half, and he walks alone between both those pieces, saying, I'm going to keep all things. And let me be as this animal. Yes. And the prophet of God says, on Calvary,
God ripped the pieces apart. Yes. Amen. Yes. And of course, we know the Spirit came back, but God is keeping the covenant. Amen. How many believes He can keep it? Amen. How many believes that He can put in you what you need to overcome? Yes. Can equip you to overcome yes. in Satan's evening? Amen. Equip you to do in this hour what nobody's ever been able to do in other ages before. Okay, if I'm going to wrap a bow around this, i got to go back to Genesis so we can finish this up, okay? Somebody say praise the Lord. Satan's trying to find a way back in. He looks at this God-man and says, not a chance. Right? There's no way that I'm going to get this man to fall. He's the Word. Adam wasn't deceived. Right? So then Eve shows up a little later. He begins to study her. And then he looks and he sees this serpent. And he realizes, you know, this serpent and I got a lot in common. This serpent is Adam's right hand man, but he can't create. And Adam's saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. Adam never slept. The serpent has to do everything. Right? He's Adam's right hand man. Kind of like Lucifer was in heaven. So he comes along. The serpent had a place for a soul, but he didn't have a soul. He comes along, starts to talk to him. says, uh, hey, Mr. Serpent, aren't you tired of that knucklehead telling you what to do all the time? You know, how would you like to, you know, you and I, if we partner together, I'm just traumatizing your friends. Just, just, you know, don't, don't take this as, but somehow, somehow there was an agreement made, right? And Lucifer this great mighty angel ends up in this flesh called a serpent. He gets a hold of Eve and he tells her a lie. She receives it and she brings forth death. She was supposed to bring forth life. But she brings forth a life of death. Right? Now let's fast forward 6,000 years later. Here we are. Right? Now I see another mighty angel this one doesn't get kicked out. This one descends. Right. Revelation chapter 10. Right. Right. This one comes down and he finds a man Glory. that was a sinner that is now saved by grace that's been washed in the blood that's been justified, sanctified right. filled with the Holy Ghost and he says, can I use your body? He says, be unto me, Lord.
going through the same squirt on the boat, but guess what? They get an opportunity too. That's right. It's not just about that picture. Isn't it wonderful? If, if you came from him, there's no way that you're going to miss it. That's right. Now, if you haven't been born again, don't you dare rest on that for a moment. Amen. Amen. You don't take the, well, bless God, if I'm predestinated, I'm going to come. Find out if you are. That's right. Amen. Make your calling, That's your election. Now, there are some that teach that you got to make it sure every day. Well, if i got to make it sure tomorrow, then that means I'm unsure of what I made sure yesterday. All right. All right. You make it sure. That's it. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I chopped this all up. I didn't even get to the message. Oh, hallelujah. But he got the hit. He's coming for his own. If I told this brother here tonight, Brother, you lost my keys. He'd probably be pretty puzzled. He'd look at me. I don't know you. I, I never had your keys. All right. Since I never had them, I can't lose them. Right. Right. So you can only lose something that you have. Right. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So if you were lost, that means he had you. And he said, I thank you, Father, for all that you're giving me. They're going to come. I'm not going to lose a one. Not one. The devil ain't getting none of my kids. None of my offspring. Thank you, Lord. So you know, that the, the thing that stumbles us, and I'll pull over here, the thing that stumbles us in this hour, the thing that we have so much trouble with, perhaps, is that it looks like we're outnumbered. But guess what? If there hadn't been a fall, only the believers that are on the earth right now would have been here. That's right. In the days of Noah, there were all these other people. That's right. The sons of men. The sons of God looked on the daughters of men, saw that they were fair mixed together, and then we had this big old conglomeration, right? And God repented, and he, he fled the earth, and eight souls were saved, and one was raptured. All right. Right? So... If all those other ones were wiped out, who were all these? Uh, oh my. Were, were their names written on the Lamb's Book of Life? Mm. Couldn't be. Because he would have just wiped out his own. All right. Right? Listen, friends, you're not outnumbered. Amen. There's an appointed number. I don't know what that number is. There's 144,000. Uh, 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 uh. oh, think about that. Look how God is. You know, we look at this nation that we're living in right now. We've been here what, a couple hundred years? That's right. How many, how many different Native American uh, tribes were there here? I don't know. Hundreds. And how long did it take for us to wipe them all out? Oh Some of them were wiped out just by European diseases that were brought. Yes. Right? Completely gone. Extinct. Gone. No more. The last of the Mohicans. Whatever. Right? A couple hundred years. Gone. And yet there were 12 tribes, and God said, I will have exactly 12,000 from each tribe. Yeah. And Satan's had 2,000 years to try to make that a lie. That's right. They didn't spread all over the earth, and God's watched over all of that seed yeah. and drove them back into the homeland. And he has 12,000 reserved. Uh, from each side. Yes. Now, if he can watch over his natural seat, can't he watch Amen. over his church? Oh, yeah. 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 Friends, if you are in him, you are safe. Yeah. If you are in him, you are seen. Yeah. If you are in him, you're, you're that's the best place to be. That's right. He can't lose you. Amen. Let me give you one more thought. We'll stop, okay? I, I didn't even get close to my my message. Go ahead, brother. Well, maybe I did. That promised land represents the opening of the world. All right. All right. Right? And when they crossed over into that land, the first place they came to was Jericho, which is a walled city. Right? They marched around that city for seven church ages. They were silent. They didn't hear the voice. But in the seventh age, they walked around for 
seven church ages and the seventh age, the exposition of the seven church ages, then at the end of that, there was a shout that was Amen. Amen. And the walls came down, the seals opened, and the land opened up to the people. Amen. And the people went in and began to take possession of what already belonged to them. They began to possess every promise that the kids and redeemer promised them. Every every redemptive blessing, they began to take possession. Until finally death was taken full possession of, right? Oh, okay, so that was the thought I was going to try to get to. I'm sorry. Here it is, all right? Satan's trying to find a way back in, right? Yes. I left you dangling there. So he talks to Eve, gets her to fall. Adam comes back in looking for Eve, and he sees the serpent over there talking to her. Mm. And Satan speaks through that serpent to Adam and says, Hey Adam, did you lose something? You missing something? Did you like your wife back? What would you trade for? All right. Your kingdom? Would you give up your position as a son of God? That's essentially what he did. Right? He chose to walk out of the garden. He didn't have to. He chose to. He did it with his eyes open. He put his arm around his wife and he chose to walk out. Lord. You said, well, Brother Baker, that couldn't be. What happened 2,000 years ago? Christ took off his royal robes, came down, became one of us, Hallelujah. and he chose. Whoa. He who knew no sin and he wasn't yes. deceived, he chose Hallelujah. to take your sin on oh. him Man. to pay the price for you. That's right. Is that right? Yes. So when Adam chose to walk out, because there wasn't another Eve in him, he forfeited his position. Amen. Satan then stepped into his position ah. in heavenly places and became the prince of the power of the air. Yes. Now he was he was controlling the elements, ah. right? Controlling the winds and the storms yes. and the waves and all these different things, which Adam was called to do that. But we're getting our place back. Amen. Right. So he's, he's in heavenly places accusing the brethren. Yes. Right? But we notice in Revelation chapter 5, one of the things that, that's so outstanding is not so much what's there, but what isn't there. There's no accuser there. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. Amen. He's not there. Because we're coming back into our position, Amen. coming back into our place as sons and daughters of God. Ruling and reigning from heavenly places while yet standing here on the earth. That's the position of the believer. Adam was the God of this earth. Amen. That's not just over it, over it naturally, but spiritually as well. He could control the winds and the waves and all that. The second Adam showed us that. That's your position. That, oh, it's so far beyond our thing. It's so it, wow. That's what man really is. That's what we're, we're being restored back to. Yes. That's my position. Amen. That's what God has called me to be. Amen. That's exactly right. Scripture says He has made us priests and kings. Amen. Amen. So the priesthood is taking place right now. Lord. Adam had to, Abraham had to separate from Lot. He came to the revelation of who he was. Sarah got the revelation. She got the faith of Abraham. And she was able to bring forth the promised son. Amen. And now Abraham, God tells him what his his uh, uh, covenant is. He tells him what his inheritance is. He tells him what Lot's inheritance is. He, he, he divides the land, the Joshua Commission. Tells him what all the what all belongs to him. And now Abraham is in a position where he can stand in the gap for Lot. Abraham couldn't even help himself before. That's right. But now he can play the part of a Messiah. He said, Lord, if there's 50 down there, will you hold back your round? Well, how about 40? Well, how about 30? How about just my family? Right. Abraham went after Lot. God, the Lamb of God was slain for Abraham. Right? 
But Lot, but Abraham spreads the blanket and brings Lot in. Amen. And Lot gets saved because of Abraham's redemption. Oh, friends, you realize you realize the position that you're in. That's true. You begin to realize that you'll become a priest. You'll be, you'll you'll stand in the gap. You'll begin to sigh and cry. You'll begin to pray. Oh God. Lord, if there's any seed out there, if there's anyone out there that'll accept you, Lord, can I can you hold back till I get them to at least accept their blood? Can I take them as far as they can come? Before the, before death strikes the land, before this is all over. It'll throw you into that. Then we become kings during the millennium as we rule and reign with him. Oh, what a tremendous What a, what a, I, Hollywood couldn't make something like this. There's no author that could even use it as well as nobody could dream up something like this. This is the secret that's been hidden, that's now unfolding. We're actually seeing what was in the back part of God's mind unfolding and being revealed. In human flesh. Amen. Can I can I just can I just take it as I'm not going to say anymore, but can I just stretch the thought just a little further? What does it mean then, Christ? What does it mean the mystery of God revealed? brother. Christ, the mystery of God revealed. What does that mean? That means the part that was hidden in him, which is you. That's now been brought out. Yes. Now that part is being revealed. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Isn't that tremendous, friend? Yes. Isn't that just beyond our imagination? Yes. There was a time we just said we just wanted to make heaven. You find out God didn't save you because He felt sorry for you. God Amen. saved you because you're one of His. Yes. He saved you because you're His child. Yes. He paid the price to bring you to oh. your position. Yes. We became subject to vanity, not willingly. Amen. But he's made a way back for us. Amen. Stand on your feet tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. You love the Lord. Yeah. Is, is he wonderful? Do you, do you know that song? Uh, he knows my name. Do you know that song? Do you know it? Okay. You guys know it. If you don't, we'll keep it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be real quick because I know we got a baptism. If I haven't already taken too much time, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, oh. we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just do this real quick. I will get out of your way. Somebody give me a key there. I I have. Oh, let's see. Can we have a key just over there? I have a maker. He formed my heart before even time began. My life was in His hands. He knows my name. He knows. 
Everybody need to change. It can change here when we'll meet that. We're going to gallon of spare. We're going to baptize a few of them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows my name. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we appreciate Brother Bethel. God, I pray that you'll give him traveling mercy, God, and the brothers. Bless his ministry continuously. I pray that you will. Father, as we put these in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you do, Lord, baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. We thank you, we love you, and we thank you for everything. Turn us over today, this is how we sing the song. Father, heard a harmless angel in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. That's what we sing. <laughs> 